the variety of climates that God created allows for God to create in each of the climates a set of plants and animals that are specially designed for that climate. The set of animals and plants that are found in a particular area uh, is called a biome. And so the variety of climates that God has created allows for the creation of a variety of biomes. We're going to step through the climates and look what biome is created in each of those climates. Beginning with the tropical zone, we have a tropical forest biome created to fit that particular situation. We've got warm uh, air or hot air with lots of rain. We have the high, uh, high precipitation rates here. We have in this situation a tropical forest. We have lots of trees. We have lots of vegetation. In fact, of all of the biomes, this is the one that will have the greatest number of different kinds of species of both plants and animals. Specially designed trees for these warm, uh, wet situations and organisms of all types to live in that environment. Might make note of the fact that I've got a photograph of an ant there in the corner. In the tropical forest, the most abundant organisms in terms of volume turn out not to be the trees, but in fact turn out to be the, uh, the, the ants and the termites in that particular zone. As we move to the north and to the south on either side of the tropical forest, we move into regions that are still warm, but they have less precipitation. We're moving in the direction of the, of the deserts, but before we get to the deserts, we've got a situation which is very, very warm and with increasingly less and less uh, rainfall as we move away from the, the tropical zone. This zone is called savanna. Under these particular situations, there isn't enough rainfall to prevent fires from spreading and burning the the vegetation from time to time. Lightning will start a fire which burns the, the uh, vegetation. Under these circumstances, usually it's, uh, it's not capable, it's not possible for most trees to survive uh, under those conditions. So uh, these, these areas end up being full of grass, which can burn and survive that burning, uh, but very few to no trees. So the savanna is what you see on either side of the tropical zone to the north and to the south, dominated by grass uh, with occasional trees and then specially designed organisms for that particular situation. Savannas, like all grasslands, are different than the tropics in a variety of ways. One of the most important ones is that in the tropics, there is very little fertility in the soil. That might be a little surprising, but the nutrients that would be in the soil are, are picked up by the extreme variety of organisms in the tropics. It's, uh, all the nutrients are really in the animals and plants that are living on top of the soil. There's very little to no uh, uh, nutrient value in the soil itself. It's the opposite in the savanna on either side to the north and the south of the tropics. There we find that the grasses are designed in such a way that most of the food value is not in the grass that's above the ground. It's actually in the roots. So that when a forest fire or a grass fire comes through and burns off everything above ground, it doesn't kill the grass. In fact, the grass has got most of its nutrients below ground, and it can easily send up new uh, blades of grass to replace those that have been burnt. So savannas and other grasslands actually are, have the richest soils of all of the biomes. This is the, these are the places where you can raise crops the easiest, uh, if you, if you uh, cut down and burn the tropical rainforest, the soil that remains is not very good for crops. In contrast, the grasslands make great uh, cropland if you want to raise that sort of thing. The organisms that are 
uh, created for this ecosystem are typically fast moving organisms that rely upon a field of sight. They can see a long distance. They can run away from their, uh, their enemies. Uh, a specially designed set of organisms for the grassland of the savanna. As we move to the north and south further, we get into that 30 degrees north, 30 degrees south, which is the desert zone. And in the desert zone, there's a desert biome, specially designed plants and animals to survive in this situation. Uh, the plants will typically uh, be kind of bulbous, they, uh, they occupy lots of volume. They try not to have a very high surface area to volume ratio so that water doesn't evaporate off uh, very readily. They're often kind of pudgy, uh, containing water in their, in their interior and often protect themselves from being eaten because they're sources of water by having uh, spines and thorns and barbules the animals that live in, this, uh, in the desert are specially designed for that situation. Many of the animals will in fact never drink a drink of water in their life. They are designed to be able to take even things like seeds, hard, dry seeds, and process them and get all the water they need out of the seeds. Very special designs for the desert environment. Here we see, looking again at a satellite photo of Africa, uh, we can see the biomes we've already spoken of. There's the equator that runs through Africa, uh, and associated with the equator, we have the tropics, which show up as a dark green uh, zone here, the tropical rainforest. On either side of the tropical rainforest is a light-colored region that corresponds to the savanna, uh, north and south. And then, you get towards 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, you've got the desert region. Very few plants dominated by sand and uh, exposed soil in those situations. As we move to the north of the desert in the northern hemisphere, to the south of the desert in the southern hemisphere, we move into temperate grassland. Once again, uh, we're, we've got a little bit more rainfall than the desert, but we're still, uh, there's still not enough rain to keep uh, forest fires, grass fires from spreading across the land. So once again, the trees are burnt out and we're left with a grassland. But unlike the savanna, it isn't as warm. It isn't a tropical heat that we have. It is a uh, rather than a hot, it's a warm, or rather than a warm, it's a cold grassland. The temperate grasslands of the world uh, include the prairies of North America, the steppes of Asia. <clears throat> These are places that perhaps you're familiar with, at least uh, if you're not directly familiar with it because you don't live in them, it might be that you've seen these things on films. Vast extents of area with grass dominating and specially designed organisms for those situations. Like for example, the bison that uh, lived in the, uh, were once very, very common in the prairies of North America. Again, because it's a grassland, the, the, uh, the, the grass itself contains a lot of nutrients. The soil contains a lot of nutrients. So the, what was once prairie in the Midwestern United States is now very fertile cropland for corn and soybeans and stuff like that. Again, organisms specially designed for the grassland live in the temperate grassland biome. Moving farther away from the equator towards the pole, we get into a zone that finally has enough water to uh, keep forest fires from burning away all the trees, and we are in what's called a temperate deciduous forest. Uh, we make the distinction of deciduous because many of these trees actually lose their leaves in the fall uh, through the winter. So rather than waste their, uh, the, they lose their heat through the leaves, uh, they actually drop their leaves and pull the sap back into the, into the ground to preserve the uh, nutrients through the winter. The temperate deciduous forest 
is, uh, dominates most of the eastern part of the United States. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this. The Appalachians have trees uh, and animals of this sort. Again, they're trees that drop their leaves in the, uh, or most of the trees are those that drop their leaves in the fall, often changing color. So if you think of the fall color, you're generally thinking of temperate deciduous forest land. You go farther to the north and the northern hemisphere, farther away from the equator, from the temperate deciduous forest, you move into what's called a coniferous forest. It gets too cold, you're getting farther and farther away from the equator, closer to the pole. It's too cold for the, temp, uh, for the deciduous trees. You're left only with coniferous trees or evergreen trees. And so you have forests that are dominated by firs and uh, pines and, and that sort of thing, and specially designed organisms to live in those kinds of environments. And then finally, when you get to the very northernmost in the northern hemisphere uh, regions, you get to the polar zone, you're now in a very specially designed uh, biome called tundra. In the tundras of the world, uh, the plants are typically very short, very, the, it's too cold and windy to grow up very high. They'll typically stay down between the rocks so that they, they don't get quite as cold. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's an amazing biome. Uh, I personally find it one of the most attractive of all the biomes. You could go into the tundra, lay yourself across those rocks, and look down at the plants. The plants are really short, but there's a lot of things going on there. Tiny, tiny little flowers, just as beautiful as the flowers of very large plants, but on a micro scale, I mean, a really, really small scale. Lots of variety of plants for the short period of time that they actually have summer in tundra conditions. And they have very interesting animals designed for the system, usually uh, animals that are white so that they are camouflaged in the snow that dominates in tundras for most of the year. Here in a satellite photo looking at the earth from the North Pole looking down so that the near the edge of the earth we're looking at about 30 degrees north latitude we see uh, the zones we've just been talking about. Everything from the deserts at 30 degrees north latitude, here's the Sahara Desert here, uh, the deserts across uh, Asia here, the southeast uh, U.S. De desert here in North America. As we move towards the pole, we go from the bleak brown deserts to the light green grasslands of the steppes of Asia and the prairies of North America to slightly darker zone with the uh, temperate grassland. And then as we move further north uh, in the northern hemisphere, we see uh, conifer forest and then finally tundra that shows up here as kind of a dark brown color. So the biomes of the earth show up uh, in the earth from space, literally, but again, the principle here is that God creating a spherical earth with a point source of heat uh, some distance from it actually creates a variety of biomes, which in turn allows God to create a variety, I'm sorry, creates a variety of, of, of climates, which in turn allows God to create a variety of biomes across the earth that then allows him to multiply the diversity Many, many more organisms could be created under those circumstances and given special places to live than if there was a single climate across the earth.